This is being filmed in early March 2024 and it's been a tough winter. Specifically, it's been a windy winter. There's been, you know, you can see the bit of a breeze today. I'm not sure how much of it's been picked up by the mic, but this is nothing. We're probably looking at maybe 20, 25 miles an hour. The winter this last year, we are on an exposed site here. Um, I mean, there's not much between us and anything. You know, there's very little tree cover and we're up on a ridge. So uh, that's part of the reason, of course, that we planted 10,000 trees in the shelter belt systems. That's, you know, key aspect of, you know, what we're going to be doing moving forward. But this last winter was particularly windy. You know, people that have spent their entire lives here were saying that, you know, that was, you know, relentless. So we'd have like a 70, 75 mile an hour rain, uh, wind event that'd go on for two, three days. And then we'd have maybe three or four days of respite before we'd even finish tidying up from the original one we'd have another one along that would be 55 miles an hour and that would go on for two days and then we'd have one that was predicted to be 80 and that would go on for three days you know it was just constant so even though a lot of the stuff that wasn't regarded as storms between these major events we were still sitting for four or five days straight at 40 45 miles an hour which is still too unstable to really go out and do anything you can't really pick stuff up so all winter pretty much we were jamming things under stuff weighing things down putting bags on things you know uh, putting rocks on stuff you know Piled, piling logs on top of stuff and a lot of stuff got damaged we had um, if you drive down the a9 today you'll still see that the um uh, a lot of the bus stops have got you know roof damage the, some of the panes of glass have just broken because they've been flexed too much by the wind a friend had the roof come off one of their barns you know it's been a brutal winter especially this far north um so i mean on the croft we've been fairly lucky nothing major went but i mean you know first off in the one of the first storms this went over, which is why this is upside down. This is a little chicken tractor that we do just to put young birds under when they're new. And then the next storm after, this oil tank went over, which is mostly empty, but still, it's not completely empty. Uh, that went over and didn't continue rolling only because it jammed up against that that had gone down earlier. Um, you know, this has some serious weight. It takes two people. Uh, to, we've had some pretty major wind events. This has never gone over before. No, actually it has once. Um, but yeah, you know, it was pretty major. I'll give you a quick look at some of the other stuff. You can see what happened to the duck house. The whole thing flipped over. I did a video about it at the time. Um, this is just something that's been put together just to, you know, hide the ducks for a little bit, just until, you know, we get the full one rebuilt. But we just haven't had enough respite to do it. I haven't even flipped the roof back over yet. But that's on the list to be rebuilt. But again, the, you know, the wind took it over. It also took over the window that we've put there to rebuild with. And then there's, see, there's the materials getting ready to be, you know, we started piling them up in the right sort of place just to get it rebuilt. This is a chicken hut that we swapped for some trees, I think. Um, this has gone over and over so many times, backwards and forwards in, you know, storm after storm that, yeah, that whole side, I think the doors come off. It's still in pretty good condition, but you know, yeah, stuff's been battered. You know, the roof's come off it. You can see that here. There's another bit of it just there. It's, uh, yeah, it's been intense. Hopefully you can hear me over the geese there behind me, but this window blew in and the, uh, yeah, a couple of, uh, yeah, it's not the auto closer. That came off and then the actual window itself blew in but that's pretty much it for actual damage to buildings a couple of things shifted a little bit right i'm going to get out the geese so that clamp on those two boards that was about 50 60 miles an hour and i had to go up a ladder <laughs> to clamp that on because it was starting to get up underneath the rubber and it looked like we were going to take the whole roof off i noticed it from inside the house that it was starting to billow up underneath so that was intense. I didn't enjoy that. I don't like going up ladders at the best of times. Um, and below that, really, the previous storm had taken over this window that I had stored for, an, for a project. That had broken there. So I had to basically drag that out of the way and then go up the ladder. Up there, so, you know, suspend it over a broken window. It wasn't great, you know, in a major storm. So you get the idea, you know, there's lots of little bits of wear and tear that's above and beyond what you'd consider normal. You don't normally expect, you know, windows to have blown out and so on. Um, everything has taken a battery, you know, so, you know, I could have spent the next hour explaining, you know, more tiles off that roof there, you know, damage to that and that snap, you know, but you get the idea. 
So this is the new normal, of course. This is new reality. Um, we came here in 2018, and in the last six years, we've had four or five, depending which way you look at it, pretty substantial droughts. That is the new normal. That's just to be expected. So that's why we've got water harvesting earthworks. We've got ponds to hold on to, you know, as much water as possible with a view to expand them significantly. We've hit one or two obstacles with that, but, you know, that's for another time. Uh, but it's going to happen. You know, we're going to put in bigger systems and hopefully starting this year, we'll be starting with some new water harvesting systems. But the point is that the windiest, the hottest, the driest, the wettest, all of these things are becoming the new normal. You know, these things, you know, the situation, it's here. You know, there's, there's no point in denying this any longer. So our systems have to adapt and have to be designed to compensate for it. So on site here, for example, we have a polytunnel that we bought in kit form about two years ago. And it's still sitting in kit form because I just don't want to put it up because, um, you know, a polytunnel, you know, high tunnel in the US, it's, you know, a pretty substantial structure in terms of, you know, catching the wind. And with the sort of winds that we've had every single time, I've been thinking, I've got, you know, I'm glad I haven't got that thing built because we'd have lost it last night. You know, that's how crazy the winds have been. So uh, the plan is currently, for example, with that, and we've picked up some really heavy duty um, steel uh, framework for, you know, a much bigger tunnel um, that, you know, no plastic with it, but, you know, some really nice material. We're going to do pit greenhouses. The maximum will come up five, six feet above ground and be very beautifully shaped to shed the wind and they'll be planted in the lee of berms that are planted to trees. In terms of berms, we're also going to put larger berms around things as far as possible. Moving forward, whenever we build any major um, uh, pond in future, all of that material we'll have to budget, so things are going to slow up. All of that material we budgeted for being moved further across the site, you know, actually provide protection for, you know, essential infrastructure, you know, that, uh, you know, buildings and so on that pre-exist. And as much as possible, uh, things like animal housing and so on, we'll make them earth bermed, um, just so that there's no projection into the wind whatsoever. So basically, I mean, we have literally had 70 miles an hour for like 36 hours straight. You know, that's scary. You know, you're going to sleep, you're waking up, it's still the same storm raging outside. You've got to go out, check that all the animal systems are okay, make sure not too much is blowing away. Some things just blow away, certain things get damaged. We've had a couple such events like that previously, but nothing on the scale that we have. And we've got to expect that that's going to get worse. So what, are we are going to have 100 miles an hour for three days, 120 miles an hour for five or six days? These events are coming, you know, up to, you know, some of the predictions that people have come out with are, you know, dramatic. You know, imagine 150, 160 miles an hour winds that go on for maybe, you know, 16, 17 days straight. I'm not saying that's coming in our lifetime, but, you know, people are talking about this stuff. You know, this stuff has to be addressed. So that's what we're planning for. We're planning for 120, 150 mile an hour winds. We're planning for a drought where it doesn't rain for four or five months straight. We can still keep our animals and our main infrastructure intact. Um, you know, we put a lot of work in at choosing the right site, so we weren't vulnerable to all sorts of events. But things like that, they're completely beyond our control. So what we can control is the design of the site and the way that we interact with it. So that's been our feedback, is that climate change is ramping up a lot quicker than even, you know, <laughs> that we were worried about. It's here. This is the reality and this is happening and we need to design accordingly.